Hi, my name is Brenna Robinson, and this is my STEM professional interview. Today, I'm interviewing Hannah Robinson. She is a court reporter, and I chose this specific mm -hmm. profession because I feel like there are a lot of inter integrated STEM elements that are really important and that help show the diversity that STEM has. Um, this is also a job profession that isn't always... Um, people aren't always aware of and they don't know that it's out there and it's a great job profession. So I'm very excited about this interview. Thank you so much for being with me today. Um, I have your signed permission slip and this is just giving me permission. It's a consent form. Um, this video could be used for in, um, educational purposes at the University of West Georgia in the College of Education. Um, if it is used, it will be to show the diversity that it exists within STEM. And STEM definitely has a lot of diversity. And I think that your job is going to show us that, that there is a lot of diverse career paths within STEM. So thank you once again. Thank you very much for being here. And I'm very excited. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Our first question today is what is your official job title? My official job title is a juvenile court reporter for the, it's called the Tallapoosa Judicial Circuit, and it's got two counties in it, Harrelson County and Polk County. Okay. Thank you. So you serve two counties at one time. Okay. Thank you so much. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. What educational background or degrees do you have? I, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I graduated from Brown College of Court Reporting, which was a really great school to go to. Unfortunately, it is closed. They closed it, but it was a really great school. Um, and I also, to be a court reporter, you have to go take certification tests. And uh, my CVR, which is cert, cert sorry, um, certified verbatim reporter, that's for this whole country, that's national. And then my CCR is certified court reporter for the state of Georgia. Okay, cool, wow. So you can get a national mm -hmm. level and a state level, and you have both, correct? Yes. Wow, okay, awesome, thank you. <clears throat> so our next question, what does a typical work week look like in your job? Well, one of the reasons that I really did like this profession is there's no week that it's exactly the same. It's very different from week to week. You know, one day, one week it could be, you know, you only have one day of court. You know, the next day you could have, the next week you could have five week, five days of court. You know, and it's very, very, it's typically like, so we, we talked about the two counties. So it's typically one day per county. Okay. And then most of the time, though, there's three days out of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So pretty flexible hours. Pretty flexible, yeah. Okay. Do you, is there a special way that you keep track of those hours, or how do you keep track of where you've been, and do you have a special uh, well, system? Well, the clerk sends us a calendar, and that tells, I mean, it, we Tuesday is designated to one county, and when uh, Thursday is designated to the other county. And so they send us the calendar, and that tells us where we're going to be and how many cases are on for that day. Oh, okay. So, wow, no day is exactly the same. No. And so um, do you know about the time length of each case, or are they different? They, when they send you the calendar, it has a certain time. They have a time that's going to start and then the time that they anticipate it taking. Sometimes wow. it takes less than, and sometimes it takes longer. Oh, okay. So you have to be pretty flexible and yes. you have to be... You cannot, you don't really want to go by that time because you don't really know how long it's going to take. Okay. So would you say it's important to get there early? Yes. How early do you normally get to your we, job? Uh, court officially starts at 9 a.m. So I'm normally there by 8.30. Oh, wow. So definitely get there early. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to our next question. Um, how does your job impact the community? <clears throat> well, my job impacts the community, um, you know, when people come to the courtroom and they have a hearing set, 
they expect it to be accurate and they well the first they expect me to be there mm-hmm. they expect me to show up the judge expects me to show up everyone expects me to be there or they can't have court and wow. so that is and it puts the behind it puts court behind it puts the proceedings behind and then that pushes everything behind and no one wants that and so when people come to court and they have a hearing they expect an accurate depiction of what was said mm-hmm. of the proceedings so if you're not there, there's no court. No. Wow. Okay. Um, and they want everything to be correct mm-hmm. and accurate. As accurate as it could possibly be. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so that leads us to our next question. How does the community impact your job? Well, we have hearings for the community. There are people in the community that, you know, need some help, have, have issues, and they're, you know, if, if it keeps us busy, it keeps the court busy, it keeps me busy when people are having hearings. Okay, mm-hmm. so how many um, hearings would, would you say you have in a day? Ooh. I, well, I it really, I'll just say that it goes, I've been there for and it goes from nine in the morning till five in the evening. Oh, wow, and you know, any time, anywhere between that. It could be eight, it could be 15, could be 20. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. So you have a pretty big impact on the community and the court community, especially, because mm-hmm. um, you got to show up. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess, could you say that, you know, if the community is experiencing a lot of unrest mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah. do you see a lot more court cases? Mm-hmm. There it is. It really is. When it's, when it gets busy, when when people have legal issues and legal problems and you know, that's when it really stays busy and it okay. and it stays busy a lot it really um, is wow it's jam packed wow um so what recommendation so this is obviously a very great profession mm-hmm. um that i have learned a lot about and i'm very interested in learning more about mm-hmm. so what recommendations do you have for students who would want to have a job like yours in the future? Well, I, I, the one reason I got into obviously the flexible hours. You, you don't have to be, and like, well, unless you're in the courtroom kind of like me, but there are other court reporters for other different things, and you can kind of pick if you want to, if if you want to take that job or not, and okay. you know, and you have a different, so you have flexible hours. You can be your own boss. You can have flexible hours. Um, and you get to you get to be a part of the community. You get to see people, and hear their legal troubles and legal issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, and but it is very it's time consuming. School, the cert, the test, the certification tests. It's time consuming. A lot of studying. A lot of studying. So dedication. Um, dedication. Lots of dedication. Lots of time and effort. Um, you know, being willing to put in that time, especially giving up an evening, giving up weekends, giving up, you know, different things to get transcripts done, you know, if the, if one's needed and things like that. Yeah. Wow. It's very time consuming. Um, I can, I can definitely tell. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. That's, that was great insight. And it sounds like you're very dedicated to your mm-hmm. job. I, and... Well, I try to be, I want to do the best that mm-hmm. I can. It sounds like it. Mm-hmm. Um, so our next question why do you choose? Why did you choose to pursue this career? Well, it was kind of like what you know what I said about the flexible hours. I like having flexible hours, um, and every day is different. There really is no week that is exactly the same. There's no hearing that's exactly the same. You hear a lot of different stuff. You hear a lot of different things. Um, it's very, very interesting, and I love the courtroom atmosphere. I didn't really want to be an attorney. I definitely don't want to be a judge. I don't want to be put in a judge's shoes. Uh, but I love be and I love hearing what people are going through, what people um, what people deal with. So this is a job that gives you that court experience mm-hmm. without being a judge or lawyer mm-hmm. and things like that. So you get to be in the court mm-hmm. doing something that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow, that's great because I know. You know, some people enjoy that court atmosphere. Yeah, it's very, um, very, uh, you feel very professional when you walk into the mm-hmm. courtroom. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Um, thank you. That's that's a great. I'm so glad to hear that because you know some people love you know watching law shows and things like that, yeah. and they feel so uh, powerful when they're watching mm -hmm. those, but they don't necessarily want to always be a lawyer mm -hmm. or a judge. And so court reporting is great for that. Yeah. And so um, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. Um, the next question, how do you think your career integrates technology, which technology <clears throat> is one of the four principles of STEM? It's the T. So um, I think this is really important because I know you use a lot of technology. Mm -hmm. So well, how do you think yeah, it's integrating? Technology is very not even just important but crucial to, to this field start these little recorders here i have two that i use like and you know these are kind of like your backup so you can go back and listen to something or listen to hearings and stuff and you and it's also very important to keep batteries for these because in the middle of a hearing or something you don't want their battery to die so it's very important for those see this little i don't know if you can see these little <laughs> recorders here um, and then, you know, my laptop, it has my software. It's where the transcripts go. It's where everything is stored. You know, if I don't have a laptop, I, I can't do it. Um, then I'm a voice reporter, so I speak. I have a little mask like this, and you just put it on your face. Okay. And when the judge or whoever's speaking at the time is speaking, I am talking into this, and it is going on to my laptop. So your voice is connected to your laptop. Yes. So if one part, this is a whole system. Yes. So if one part of this this technology system mm -hmm. is not working, mm -hmm. nothing's working. No, I can't do. I, I if this stops working, this all of this stops working, and it's not you can't do it. And unless I mean, obviously, if, you know, you're a stenographer, you have to have a whole other machine for that. Okay. But it's still the same thing. You have to have your machines and things to work to be able to do it. Oh, okay. So you have to be pretty familiar with technology. Yes, very. Um, how would you say you have become more familiar with technology through pan through the pandemic? How have you acquired a bunch of a new knowledge about technology? Um, through the pandemic, well, obviously the world has gone virtual through Zoom, even WebEx, things like that. And now that it is the court is still so much through Zoom, you know, you have to know how to work Zoom and you have to know how it works. And they'll, now the way it is, they send you a link to Zoom and that's the courtroom. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's, how, that's how you get into the courtroom and that's how you take down the proceedings. And so you have to know how Zoom works and, you know, when to log in and things like that. So would you say that if you're not familiar or even pretty well equipped to handle technology, you might struggle with court reporting? Mm -hmm. Yes. They, I remember having several classes just over technology wow. for, you know, laptop, your mask thing, all kinds of stuff like that. Just technology. Um, I know you said stenography. That's mm -hmm. where you type. Would you say this is the voice theory? Would you say that that is an advancement in technology mm -hmm. for court reporting? Yeah, the, I don't really know when voice came. I think it was around like the 1940s. It's been, so it is older but it's still sonography was first. And so this was something that we learned. And it's it, this is easier to learn, but it's also a lot more difficult in terms of technology because okay. it's this is so sensitive and you gotta say things you know correctly for it to be able to pick it up. Right. Would you say that if your technology quit working, you wouldn't be able to even do what you do? No. Yeah, you mm -hmm. it's very difficult when you have Stuff that even, you know, messes, obviously technology is going to mess up sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if it completely stops working, it's very much a problem. So do you have um, a backup plan for if your technology quits working? Well, my I do have, the, my mask actually one time did stop working. It broke. This little part came out of this little part. And that's, this is what makes it work. And so thankfully I had a backup. Oh. I, I was able to use a backup mask for that day because I had to send this one to get it fixed. But that's exactly a perfect example of technology messing up and having to have a backup plan. It's very important to have backup plans in court reporting. Okay. You're backing up your work and all kinds of things. Wow. So you have to be very familiar with technology. Yes. And because there is a whole software just for the mask. Just for the mask. Just for the mask. And then there's a software for your computer. Yes. 
And so, and then you have to know how to work your recorders. Yes. So it's a whole technology world. Yes, because it's very important to make sure that these are recording. If they're not recording, you don't right. have your backup. And so I'm glad I'm glad we talked about that because I don't think many people realize mm -hmm. how much technology is involved in court reporting. And there, this is even <clears throat> kind of just the basics where there's all kinds of stuff that people use out there. I actually do have, I don't have it with me, but I have a little microphone that sits right here and I can, it amplifies people's voices and I have a little ear, ear oh. phone. I do have a little headphone that I can plug in and I can hear oh, people okay. amplified through that. Wow. And that's stuff that you don't have to have though. Okay. The, this is the basis that you have to have. Um, but there's so much technology out Do there. you think technology has helped improve court reporting? Do you think you do better yes. having the technology set up mm -hmm. and you're able to speak? Yes. And that is part of the reason why I get there so early because I have so much stuff, stuff have, to set up. You have so much technology yes. to set up. Yes. Wow. Um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's a huge perspective on technology. Yes. I don't think people really realize how important technology is in court it's reporting. It's very, very important. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the other part that I wanted to talk about is the M in STEM is math. So how would you say that math is integrated in your profession? Math? Well, one of the good part things about it is even though there may not be as much math. There is still math. You need math in everything. Also. Yeah. So there is still math involved in this. And one of the, one of the main things is um, when you have a transcript that you got to deliver to somebody or, you know, if someone needs it, you are responsible for billing them for your transcript. Okay. And like they won't do it for you. But it, you're, it's up to you. And you have to calculate how many pages are in that transcript. And that's how you know how much to charge for okay. an original transcript. So and, you make mm -hmm. the transcript. Mm -hmm. And then if they, um, how do they ask you for one? Most of the time they contact me through email or phone or whatever. However, best to communicate with someone. And then um, they send me, I, I guess you can call it like a down payment for the transcript. And that's when I work on the transcript and give them the full total cost for it. How is the uh, the transcript calculated? How do you know how much to charge? By page. It's by page. You count up the number of pages and then you send, uh, the state of Georgia has the, it's how much you charge. And then you charge for copies if any other party wants a transcript. Oh, so if you have, if you had a case that had mm -hmm. two parties and they both want a transcript, mm -hmm. you'd have to do one for one party and then yes. calculate one for the other. Yes. So if you were to mess up on your calculations, you could either, what could happen? Well, if I mess up, well, I, I they only pay me what I tell them to pay. And so if I mess up, that's on me. They, I If I miscalculate a page or something, you know, that's on me. That's money that I don't okay. get. Um, and also, I also get paid, that's something that I didn't discuss yet, getting paid to just walk in the courtroom and take down the proceedings. There's okay. a flat fee that you get paid to, to just take, take it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to be, you have to have some pretty good math skills yes. to be able to charge for mm -hmm. the transcripts and things like that. Um, do you, how do you budget? Are you, would you say you have to budget out things or? Mm -hmm. You do. Well, and another thing about, on top of the math, going back to the technology, is it's a revolving world around you. Have to evolve to the court reporter all the time. To the to the court reporting profession, you have to upgrade your stuff. You have to upgrade your software. You have to buy a new mask at some point, oh. and all of that time, all that. And so of you have to pay for all mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. I mean, that comes and, out of your and that, and I'm responsible for sending the invoices in. Oh, on, on a monthly basis, so I have to calculate how many days I'm there. And I have to send in an invoice. And that's on you. No one's yes, going to do no, that. No, that's for on you. me. They will, they, that's on me to do that. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, you don't, you just keep up with your own things and yes. your own calculations and things like that. So you do, you have to have some pretty good math skills to make yes. sure everything is mm -hmm. perfect. Well, and you don't want to over, over charge either because that's when you have to pay money back. Oh, mm -hmm. then yeah, you don't want to do that. No. No. <laughs> wow. Well, I think that is, I think you have a great profession 
And thank you um, once again for doing this interview with me. Thank you for shedding some light mm -hmm. on how important court reporting is. I know you do a great job at it. And it, it really is a profession that has, you know, great STEM integrated pieces that you just have to, people just have to know about. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thankful that you did this interview. Oh, so well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you.